Let's get it. Family, that has always bewildered me, for lack of a better word. Because I wonder how you could just leave a long, some say 200, almost 300 years of a bondage and go right back into another. Or be told that you're going to go right back into another. I just haven't been able to get that or understand that <clears throat> as far as the people, how we would, wouldn't remember that. And this, this part right here, a lot of folks say that Yahusha paid it all and that all the curses have been reversed. But no, they haven't. They're being reversed as we speak, as of the 400 years of our enslavement has been finalized, which it has been. And now the curses are being put on our enemies. And it says the most High himself will send on you curses, confusion and frustration in everything you do, until at last you are completely destroyed for doing evil and abandoning me. And see, we see the results of this destruction and we see the as far as who was it, um where he said was it Jeremiah in the valley of the bones that was a picture of our, us being totally destroyed dry bones which means completely dead in 21 it says the most high will afflict you with diseases until none of you are left in the land you are about to enter and occupy the most high will strike you with wasting disease fever and inflammation with scorching heat and drought and with blight and mildew hmm. these disasters will pursue you until you die the skies above will be as yielding as bronze and the earth and deep will be as hard as iron. The Most High will change the rain that falls on your land into powder and dust will pour down from the sky until you are destroyed. Mm. The Most High will cause you to be defeated by your enemies. You will attack your enemies from one direction, but you will, but you will scatter from them in seven. You will be an object of horror to all the kingdoms of the earth. See, this is where we're at right now, where we have been here in the last 400 years. We have been a horror to all the kingdoms of the earth. Your corpse will be food for all the scavenging birds and wild animals, and no one will be there to chase them away. The Most High will afflict you with boils, with the boils of Egypt and with tumors, scurvy, and the itch from which you cannot be cured. The Most High will strike you with madness, blindness, panic. You will grope around in broad daylight like a blind person groping in the darkness, but you will not find your way. You will be oppressed and robbed continually, and no one will come to save you. You will be engaged to a woman, but another man will sleep with her. Uh-oh. Don't this sound like slavery? And what master did? You will build a house where someone else will live in. Uh-oh, same thing. You will plant a vineyard, but you will never enjoy its fruit. Uh-oh, oh boy. <clears throat> this is a picture of the curses on our backs that have been. Your eyes will be butchered before your eyes, but you will not eat a single bite of, it, of the meat. Your donkey will be taken from you, never to be returned. Your sheep and goats will be given to your enemies, and no one will be there to help you. You will watch as your sons and daughters are taken away as slaves. <clears throat> oh 
boy. Oh boy. Your heart will break for them, but you won't be able to help them. A foreign nation you have never heard about will eat the crops you worked so hard to grow. You will suffer under constant oppression and harsh treatment. You will go mad because of all the tragedy you see around you. The Most High will cover your knees and legs with incurable boils. In fact, you will be covered from head to foot. The Most High will ex ex sit, ex exile. The Most High will exile you and your king to a nation unknown to you and your ancestors. Oh boy. sounds like a land far off, or lands far off, into all the four corners of the world. You will become an object of horror, ridicule, and mockery among all the nations which the, the Most High will send you. Hear that? You will become an object of horror, ridicule, and mockery among all the nations which the Most High sends you. You will plant much but harvest little. The locusts, for locusts will eat your crop, crops. You will plant much but harvest little, for locusts will eat your crops. You will plant vineyards and care for them, but you will not drink the wine or, or eat the grapes, for the worms will destroy the vines. You will grow olives, olive trees throughout your land but you will never use the olive oil for the fruit will drop before it ripens you will have sons and daughters but you will lose them for they will be led away into captivity swarms of insects will destroy your trees and crops the foreigners living among you will become stronger and stronger while you become weaker and weaker what, what is this but a blueprint of what would happen to us and what did happen to us. Because folks would come over here to the Americas for sure and get grants and loans and be entitled, which we can't get those grants from. And they would grow stronger than us, like this text says, while we would grow, grow weaker. And I heard a, um, <clears throat> a Maury speaking on this subject. He said that foreigners would come over here just to destroy us, as this text says, just to help in our destruction. But the word he used was, uh, when you come and take something from another, when you come and, um, like take your part of the um, spoiling. They come, they come over here to spoil us, send it back to the other nations, and um, send it back to their home nation. And like this text says, they become stronger while we become weaker. But it's all the nations that he sent us to, not just America. See, he scattered us to the four corners of the earth. And I'm going to say this why it's fresh on my mind. And that's why the Most High said that the wind went out and blew into the four corners of the earth to waken them dry bones. Why would the wind go to the four corners of the earth? To where he scattered his people to wake them up, to fill them with that life that he was speaking on in that text. They will lend money to you, but you will not lend to them. They will be head, and you will be the tail. If you refuse to listen to the Most High, your Elohim, and to obey the commands and decrees he has given you, all these curses will pursue and overtake you until you are destroyed. These horrors will, be, will serve as a sign and a warning among you and your descendants forever. Can we say this again? This is the point that I'm making with, all, with reading over all of that. 
the text says these horrors will serve as a sign and warning among you and your descendants forever. They're a sign. So when you see the curses on folk, or you have seen the curses on folk, then you know who the people, the most highest people are. Nobody else in all of history have had these curses on their backs, as well as the, the stripes, the marks. But I just wanted to make that point. These horrors will serve as a sign and warning among you and your descendants forever, forever, ever. Forever, they're a sign. If you do not serve the Most High, your Elohim, with joy and enthusiasm for the abundant benefits you have received, the provision, you will serve your enemies whom the Most High will send against you. You will be left hungry, thirsty, naked, and lacking in everything. Oh boy, that sounds like our people. Here we go. The Most High will put an iron yoke on your neck, oppressing you harshly until he has destroyed you. Who else in all of history has worn an iron yoke like our people have in slavery? The Most High will bring a, here we go, a distant nation against you from the end of the earth and it will swoop down on you like a vulture. It is a nation whose language you do not understand, a fierce and heartless nation that shows no respect for the old and no pity for the young. And we see this today. We have seen it all throughout the last 400 years. But even more today, we see how they kill our boys in the streets, shoot them 60 times. They shoot at them 90 times, but hit them 60 times. What an overkill and what a, a um, what, what would, do we say? Um, a revealing a prophecy, because that's exactly what it is. Its armies will devour your livestock and crops, and you will be destroyed. They will leave you no grain, new wine, olive oil, camels, I mean calves, or lambs, and you will starve to death. They will attack your cities until all the fortified walls in your land, the walls you trusted to protect you, are knocked down. They will attack all the towns in the land the Most High your Elohim has given you. The siege and terrible distress of the enemy's attack will be so severe that you will eat the flesh of your own sons and daughters whom the Most High your Elohim has given you. The most tender-hearted man among you will have no compassion for his own brother, his beloved wife, and his surviving children. He will, he will refuse to share them the flesh he is devouring the flesh of one of his own children because he has nothing else to eat during the siege and terrible distress that your enemy will afflict on all your towns. And see, this was back in 70 AD when the Romans attacked our, our homeland and took over and burned it. most tender and delicate woman among you, so delicate she would not so much as touch the ground with her foot, would be selfish towards the husband she loves and towards toward her own son or daughter. She will hide from him the afterbirth and the new baby she has born, so that she herself can secretly eat him. Mm. She will have nothing else to eat during the siege and terrible distress that your enemy will inflict on all your towns. If you refuse to obey all the words of, of instruction that are written in this book, and if you do not fear the glorious and awesome name of the Most High, your Elohim, which is Yahuwah, then the Most High will overwhelm you and your children with indescribable plagues. 
these plagues will be intense and without relief, making you miserable and unbearably sick. He will afflict you with all the diseases of Egypt and you that you feared he will afflict you. He will afflict you with all the diseases of Egypt that you fear so much, and you will have no relief. The Most High will afflict you with every sickness and plague there is, even those not mentioned in this book of instruction. Oh boy. That means he's gonna make up some stuff to put on. Though you become number, though you become as numerous as the stars in the sky, few of you will be left because you will not listen to the Most High your Elohim. Just as, just as the Most High has found great pleasure <clears throat> in causing you to prosper and multiply, the Most High will find pleasure in destroying all of you. This is the God of love everybody be talking about all the time. Love, love, love. You will be torn from the land you are about to enter and occupy. For the Most High will scatter you among all the nations from one end of the earth to the other. Who else have been scattered to all the nations of the world besides us folks? Let's read that again. For the Most High will scatter you among all the nations, all the nations, all the nations, from one end of the earth to the other. There you will worship foreign gods or foreign Elohims that neither you nor your ancestors have known. Gods made of wood, the cross, and stone, Islam, there, among those nations, you will find no peace or place to rest. And the Most High will cause your heart to tremble and your eyesight to fail and your soul to despair. Your life will constantly hang in the balance. You will live night and day in fear, unsure if you will survive. Pardon me. See, family, we, we, we get a taste of this today. Just riding the roads. If the morning, in the morning you would say, if only it were night. And in the evening you would say, if only it was morning. For you would be terrified by the awful horrors you see around you. Mm. And this is a script everybody hates to hear us brews mention. But see, when you, you read it in context, then you can understand who, who they're actually talking about, who, who Moses is actually prophesying about. Then the Most High will send you back to Egypt in ships. Now, when they say back to Egypt, it says in another text that Egypt means the house of bondage. To a destination I promise you will never see again which you're not gonna go back to the same Egypt again. This time it's gonna be another land of bondage, which he just told us about in the prior text, as far as all the nations of the world. There you will offer, no, this is a lie. It's talking about there you will offer to sell yourselves to your enemies as slaves, but no one will buy you, that's a lie. The real, the right text says there you will be enslaved by your enemies and no one will buy you. That means no one will free you. Bah. Not Martin, not Malcolm, bah. not Garvey, none of them. None of them will be able to free us but him. And it says in another text, he will gather us from all the lands that he sent us out to. But the whole idea today, family, is you can't have one without the other. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
obedience and obedience and provision. Can't have one without the other. One is predicated on the, the next. Obedience is all it's gonna it's gonna take. Or should we say obedience is what it's gonna take to receive the provisions that's laid aside for us. So family, as with all of our recordings, we got to bring it back around to home base. Or bring it back to home. To where this idea confronts us personally. And I always say me personally. Because it's first given to me. And I first must search my soul and my heart and make sure I'm lining up. Because, to keep it simple, without my obedience, there's no provision. And we love to harp on the Most High's grace and mercy, grace and mercy, grace and mercy. But when is it gonna come down to obedience? And the main text we didn't go over today that the Most High just reminded me of is if you are faithful and obedient, then you will eat the good of the land. You will be provided for. But see, just like this is to some people the worst of times to live, for us the Most High's people, it's the best of times to live. A time of great provision. And see, as I heard of Maurice saying one time before, it hadn't been too long. He was saying, if you're obedient, you don't have to be begging the most high for nothing. Just as I said in my notes, if you're obedient, you will start seeing your needs are met. Praise the Most High. So the question is up, always put back on us, which way do I want to go? Do I want to be faithful and obedient? And therefore eat the good of the land? Or do I want to continue to live my selfish lifestyle where I think I'm providing for myself? Where I think I got it all together? Because see, thank you, Father. Just like he reminded me of that idea <clears throat> and script about the um, the house being built on sand or opposed to the house being built on the firm rock, the firm foundation. And of course we all know that that firm foundation is Yahushua HaMashiach, the word, the most high salvation given to us. But it takes obedience. See, I'm going to keep it simple. As far as the law, statutes, and commands go, just imagine you're living in a house with your parents. And they have given out rules for you to follow. But one day, your big brother, <laughs> Hallelujah. He takes a whooping for everybody. So you say all the sacrifices are, are, are taken care of. So we don't have to follow no more rules. Mm. See them, them rules. Them laws, statutes, and commands. That's what sets us apart as holy. How can you be holy? 
if you're not set apart doing the right thing. So I guess the question is, what makes us holy? What makes us set apart? Spotless, without wrinkles. And I heard a fellow say that by walking with the Ruach HaKadosh, listening to his voice, then you don't have to follow no more laws, statutes, and commands. Now, to be quite honest, I'm not going to argue against that. But at the same time, what do you follow? What do you um? What is the Holy Spirit leading you into? What is he leading you into? That's the question. The same laws, statutes, and commands. You still got to follow them one way or the other. But see, what's going on is you're trying to take away the blueprint that the Most High put out there for us to follow in the first place, which is impossible. You're always going to have to have a roadmap to progress. You're always going to have to have rules and laws and commands that you must follow. That if you don't follow, there's always going to be result, the results of death. And like Adam and Eve, they, they had to follow the rules also, which they didn't. And it cost them their lives. It cost them their homes. They was kicked out of the garden. It cost them their provision. Mm -mm -mm. Um, we're going to be obedient today and continue to be provided for by our most loving Elohim, Yahuwah, and we can put the um, emphasis on his name today, Sabaoth, which means the Elohim of Heaven's army, armies which he is fighting for us as we speak. Just as we spoke on the other day, help is on the way, or in the prior recording, help is on the way. Yes, help is always on the way, family, but it's gonna take obedience to get the help. Like I was saying about the, um, the family, your brother can't take the whooping once in all times for you. He might have had to sacrifice one or two times to take the whooping for everybody when everybody was messing up, but he the one that got caught. Or he was the one that usually caught the, um, the whooping. Because he was always getting caught. But no, that's not how it works. It's no once and for all everything is done what Yahushua did was pay for the sin and giving us the right to forgiveness, giving us the right to redemption. But we still must follow them rules. See, the text says the wages of sin is death. So with that being said, you gotta, that sin has to be paid for. And it has to be dealt. So he paid the price for our sins as we accept that price. But what, what it means, the way we accept it is through our obedience. Like he said, if you love me, keep my command, commandments. And that's with an S for all those folks that say there's only one command, love. <laughs> really? Okay. That's absolutely crazy. When the text says that he did gave us them laws, they're life given. Those laws and statutes and commands, they're life given. And not only are they life-given, but they're given to set us apart. See, when we look at the life of Christian folks, and I use them as a 
example because that's the lifestyle I was caught up in. They're not set apart. You can't tell them. You can't tell the difference between a Christian these days and sinners. Matter of fact, most Christians are the leaders of the pack, the sin pack. Some would say the wolf pack. <laughs> oh boy. Why is that? Grace and mercy. We can get off the hook with grace and mercy. That's what we say. We love to say. Grace and mercy gives me the free to sin. And see, Paul, who they love to run to, just like I heard another teacher say, Paul is y'all daddy. Y'all don't respect Yahushua. Y'all respect Paul's words more than Yahushua's words. Paul said, should I continue to sin so I can get, a, get in on that grace? But the answer comes back is nah, heaven no most I forbids but I'm going to let that be my time for getting on in, into the two part video instead of just one long one but praise the most high yeah obedience and provision can't have one without the other simply means you're not going to be provided for in disobedience. What's going to happen is you're going to get kicked out of the land, kicked out of the promise, and be left wanting. Be left without. And the most important part of that what I always like to say, being left out of the presence of the Most High. It's just like being forever kicked out of the presence of the Most High. See, that's hell right there. Being out of His presence, period, is hell. Before an eternity, oh boy. Now that's a sad song. I promise you I don't want no part of that. A whole eternity without the most high. <clears throat> yes indeed, that's hell. But as always, I love y'all family. Stay up and keep pushing forward in the right direction. Shalom.